Okay, it's day 268, and these rhizomes have alternated between being dried out too much and being soaked in hydrogen peroxide constantly. I sprayed some water on them, but you know, they're not going to last too long, I feel, at these conditions. I'm going to show you what I have in mind. Some of this footage is redundant from my video entitled Dealing with Fungus Net Infestations for Indoor Potted Plants. So if you've seen that, then you can kind of skip ahead a few minutes, but basically I made that video so people would understand if they're not following this series because I think this is a very important topic. So I definitely wouldn't recommend potting mix for anything. It's basically infested with eggs and it holds on to too much water. It can easily cause root rot. So I tackled this situation by sterilizing a new growth medium. This is some quality footage of a fungus gnat larvae that I got recently. They have transparent bodies, black heads, and you can even see the brown digested material inside their digestive systems if you look closely enough. So they're just like any other grubs and what it's feeding on are these wood chips and potting mix. Potting mix is not like any kind of dirt you will find outside. Wood chips are very water absorbent and because of that they're basically rotting all the time. So that's a recipe for disaster for an indoor potted plant. I don't want this rot all the time. I want something more akin to a natural sandy soil with better drainage. So I'm going to show you what I did after this. This is a bag of play sand that I bought, 50 pound bag, and it's been pre-washed. The importance of that is hopefully this sand won't contain any salt that would affect plant growth. But sand is very good in that it wicks away moisture and it's inorganic. Bugs can't eat it or live in it really in the absence of anything else and basically it'll provide drainage and aeration. This is diatomaceous earth. It's a very fine powder consisting of the fossilized remains of diatoms, uh, microorganisms, a type of algae. It's basically silicon dioxide, 80 to 90 percent of it, a little bit of uh, alumina as well, and a little bit of iron oxide. So basically these are very small and sharp fine particulates that will hopefully scratch the insects and absorb their oils and kill them. And this is sphagnum peat moss coming from cold peat bogs and cold climes. And this basically is pretty absorbent, but it's nutritious and it doesn't break down very fast. I don't want something that's rotting at a very rapid rate like wood chips all day, generating more bugs. So I'm going to mix this all together. This will be about 40% of my mix and I'm going to sterilize it in the oven and hopefully that can serve as a good new growing mix for my ginger plants. This is what the three components look like before the mixing. The dark one is a sphagnum peat moss. It more closely resembles dirt than you know potting mix that you buy in stores. Uh, the white stuff that's very fine powder, it's very clay-like, is the diatomaceous earth. The uh, particle diameters are very very small, you know, averaging around one micron or less. And then on the far side, you see some sand. It's more of a beige color. Uh, that's the play sand. So I'm going to mix these all up really well with gloves and basically put this in the oven where I'm going to sterilize everything. I'm mostly just afraid of stuff being in the sphagnum peat moss, you know, insect eggs. So this is what the finalized mixture looks like. I'm going to put it in the oven, you know, um, 300 Fahrenheit which is 149 Celsius for, I don't know, at least an hour and a half is what I normally do. So this is just a small sample. This isn't what I did for my ginger. It's for another growing experiment. And basically that should kill any insect eggs or pathogens that are inside mold, whatever. And we should be able to get a fresh start free of fungus gnats. So fast forwarding to day 290. And this is my new setup for artificial sunlight to pass the winter. We just passed the winter equinox. It's the day before Christmas. And basically, this is an LED bulb that gives off a white appearance light. You know, it's basically akin to natural sunlight in that it encompasses the entire spectrum. But plants really need red light and blue light mostly. They don't need green light, um, yellow light, those spectrums. So these reflectors greatly increase the amount of artificial light that hits and the sunlight that hits during the day. Now this is the bulb, it's an LED bulb, um, you can see these weird uh, camera effects when you 
zoom in on it. But this is Drake and Sully. So Drake is the taller one on the left, and Sully is the smaller one on the right. Remember, Sully originally had a shoot system that was out before, but it died. So Drake is kind of dying in its lower leaves. It's a very, very slow process, but based on my experience, if the plants have been traumatized, um, and that usually happens down in the root system, then the shoot system will gradually struggle or die over time. And it's up to a fresh start with new shoot systems to make you succeed. So Sully's new shoot system is looking pretty good for the moment. I mean, all this damage that you see was uh, pre-existing. But for Drake, you know, the stem, if you can call it that, it's really more of a roll-up of leaves than a proper stem. It's really thin compared to Sully's existing one. And here you see this bare patch of sand. You know, it's like I'm at the beach, and it's a real morale booster to see this every day. I just really like the look of it. Well, Big Bertha hasn't sprouted yet, but I saw a lot of potential shoots when I last washed off the roots and did all this transplanting. So this is a bottle of hydrogen peroxide, fresh, and I'm going to water from the watering tray. I'm going to fill it up. And this lasts for a really long time, so I don't need to water very often. So here's the make and model of the LED bulb that I bought. So light emitting diodes have been around for ages with the advent of electronics. But, you know, the concept of having them as household lights has only been around for a few years. I mean, they really haven't made it into the mainstream market until very, very recently. But these basically have a natural spectrum of light. They're not a very harsh, you know, red green and blue like uh, fluorescent lights are but most you know indoor growers and whatnot still use fluorescent compact lights uh, this one is a 13.5 watt one that has 850 lumens of output it said on the front that it costs one dollar sixty three cents to operate a year if you do it three hours a day so maybe I'm spending at most five bucks if I use this all the time which I won't in the summer